All right, so here with Luxembourg Animal Save. This is the first time they've been at the front of this slaughterhouse. And all we've really seen this morning is truckloads of carcasses be dragged out of this place. Uh, one truck arrived before we did, and they're saying no more trucks are coming, but slaughterhouses always say that. So it's absolutely freezing. It was snowing here yesterday. The tour is starting to chip away, very exhausted. We've got another flight tonight to Milan, so we'll see how this all pans out. There's a fire inside your heart. Let it light up the world. Light up the world. Uh, we started in Amsterdam, went to Copenhagen. Then we, uh, from Copenhagen, I think we went to Portugal, Spain. Um, <laughs> it's really hard right now. Are, are the protestings in Luxembourg or in Europe the same as in Australia? Because you are a very militant person. Militant? Uh, militant, yes. What do you mean by militant? Because... Um, you're very this rough in the wording and you're very... Um, how may I say? Um, a rough in the wording? Yes. You don't think what I, the way that I describe what happens to animals is accurate? Or do you think it's sensationalized? Maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, well, because like, if I was to say that animals are shot in the head and slashed across the throat and chopped up into pieces, that would be an accurate description of how animals are slaughtered. Yes, what I read, I don't know if it's true, that you um, were um, telling, uh, what are you calling, um, butchers, nazis? No, 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 no. I said... Um, Perhaps it's citated it's, in it's, the wrong way. It, no, 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 it wasn't butchers. What I said is that, um, and this was earlier on in my advocacy about two years ago, the media found this uh, post that I made. And I said that, uh, basically I said to cows in the dairy industry, dairy farmers are like Nazis. Okay. Because they are ba dairy cows are enslaved by the farmers and exploited, and then they are sent to a slaughterhouse and butchered into pieces. And through the cow's eyes, uh, these people aren't good people. Okay. Um, you changed your life a bit ago. I changed my life, yes. So I, I used to have a very harsh past with um, gangs. I, and I know, I know. I read and, that. and then I had an epiphany whilst in prison and I decided to change my life around and then I went vegan and when, when I went vegan I realized that um, what was the epiphany exactly the epiphany was that I'd been making many mistakes and it had led me to this point and I didn't want to be in this situation that I was in any longer and I wanted to change and then I um, I always knew that it was hypocritical to care about some animals while I had the piece of another on a plate and I, I was living with that hypocrisy in my heart. So and you ate meat as well, a lot, I think, before? Of no? course, of course, everyone does. Uh, not, not many people don't. I mean, we're all conditioned by the same culture. Our family does it. Uh, it's legal. We're taught to do it. Everyone at school eats flesh. I mean, but no one really has seen a slaughterhouse or watched animals be butchered to death. I mean, and I think that would turn anyone off of their burger. Um, well, most compassionate humans. So for me, um, I, I realized this hypocrisy. I was criticizing my mum about smoking cigarettes. You shouldn't be smoking, mum, you know. And then she said, there's a lot of things people have, a lot of habits people have, they don't change. And I reflected inside my heart. Because it's very human not to change his habits. Mm. <laughs> that, that's true. And when it's, I... It's in the human nature. And when I... You like it or well, not... Well, it's, it's the truth. Many people do change and many people can change. And I think it's de I de determined by your desire. Uh, so what motivates you? Mm. And I was very motivated by my actions not harming others anymore. I wanted to change that. And when I purchased animal products, I was directly harming animals by my choices. And I couldn't live with that in my heart, knowing that innocent beings that had done nothing wrong to me were being murdered for my stake. Okay. Do you think protestings like this will change something? 
Well, the SAFE movement is one of the most effective and powerful forms of activism you can do, basically. Uh, you are this showing... Is your opinion. No, oh, well, there's actual... It's not an opinion, it's pretty solid. I'll, show, I'll explain to you why. So what happens is when the trucks stop, uh, everyone gets their phones out and shows images of those animals. Mm -hmm. And those images go viral online and people connect the flesh that's on their plate with the animal from which it was torn. And people are missing that connection in society. They see the farm, happy animals on the farm, and they see the flesh from farm to plate. But well, the place- Most of the animals aren't happy in farms because it's mass education uh, they live under very bad circumstances most animals are factory the farms farmed. where cows are per perhaps a bit happy are bio farms well i would suggest that the the uh industry promote happy farms but i don't think they are happy but even if they were okay most most animals come from factory farms you're right mm -hmm. but even if they were happy animals there's a part in the middle called the slaughterhouse that they don't advertise and with the SAVE movement, we can show you the pictures of the animals before they go into the slaughterhouse. We can take uh, footage and audio of animals being lowered into gas chambers. Pigs are lowered into gas chambers. You can hear them screaming. When people see these images worldwide, there's many people involved in the SAVE movement worldwide. When people see these images, it deters their consumption of animal products. Okay. Mm. And when there's videos going viral from out the front of these places, it creates social change and people change what they buy. What do you say to people who doesn't want to stop their consume of consumption of meat? Somebody who is telling you right in the face, perhaps a very sympathetic um, person, um, I love meat. I love meat. Yeah. I don't want to, um, um, to miss it. Well, I would say that just because you desire something or have a pleasure response from an action, if that action harms another person or another animal, then that's not a moral thing to do. If, you, if everything you do is motivated by your pleasure response, I don't think it's a moral way to act. Um, you might have someone who derives pleasure from uh, having a sexual act with someone without their permission. They're deriving pleasure from the harm of another individual. Okay. And when I eat the flesh of an animal, I'm deriving pleasure from the harm of another individual. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept. Um, and I don't think that that's a moral way to act. Um, if that were my family member or my dog inside of that slaughterhouse and someone were to say, well, I love the taste of their flesh and that's why I'll continue to do it. Um, I don't think flesh, that that's a- Flesh is another word for meat. Well, f you have flesh on your bones. Um, I think we use meat as a trick word to um, distract you from what it actually is. It's called a euphemism, okay? We use meat instead of flesh, okay? okay? Um, they are actual body parts from real animals. Mm -hmm. These are dead bodies in there, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's not sensa sensationalized. I've, I've been working in a slaughterhouse. You've worked in a slaughterhouse. <laughs> Yeah. So you've seen the, the dead bodies and the carcasses and the, you probably smelt disgusting. the blood. It was at 6 o'clock in the morning. Did, you, did it make you hungry? No. So it, it is disgusting. it food? It doesn't look like food when they are hanging half bodies, um, no. pigs and, or uh, 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 beefs. When they're struggling for their last breath inside choking on their own I blood? Did, I didn't saw the animals. I only saw what is... At the other side? Okay. Okay. Well, I've seen um, animals have their throats slashed open and struggling for their life and, you know, gargling on their own blood and the fear in their eyes. And no animal wants to be butchered in the slaughterhouse. the slaughterhouse. It was um, a company who works with the meat coming from the slaughterhouse. Okay, oh, that's okay. different. That's not a slaughterhouse. Uh, yeah, but I, it's disgusting. I, most people, most good-hearted, compassionate human beings, if they see what goes on on the kill floor, Okay, you know, uh, slaughterhouse workers suffer PTSD from working in slaughterhouses, stabbing animals all day, and we put those human beings in those conditions so we can have a sandwich with flesh in it. I just don't think it's justified for humans to be killing animals all day, or for the animals who lose their lives and suffer inside of these places as well. Okay. Why did you change your life this way? Because it's not a change for 100%, but it's... 200 percent you're doing 
you're doing just the opposite of what you have been doing before. I guess Is this because you feel guilty for something? I guess a, a part of it was um, making amends in my life because I spent many years, you know, I wasn't the best person to be around and I didn't, didn't do many good things and I felt like I wanted to make amends for the wrongs I'd done in my past and I felt like that the animals had, they were so defenseless and they needed someone to speak for them because they can't speak for themselves. When human beings are being oppressed, they can form a coalition and they can defend themselves or they can protest. Mm -hmm. Animals are completely defenseless and helpless. They cannot defend themselves and human beings capitalize on that. They target them, okay, and bully them and... Okay, what do you answer to people who are asking you, is it good to be the pop star of vegans and animal savings? around the world because you're very very good organized on the social medias yeah i don't didn't set out to be a pop star or be well known but um as a result of me being well known my message gets out further so it's only positive for the movement and positive to inspire more people to become vegan positive to inspire more vegans to speak up against this it's positive for animals all right so here we are at luxembourg cube we are a uh, pretty exhausted and we're just getting ready to take a flight to Milan but before that we're going to do a cube and I'm going to give these guys a workshop. Well the pop star of vegans and animal rights activists protest Joey, uh, protest action Joey Carbstrong visits Luxembourg. Pop star that's ridiculous. Yeah. And then the, in the other documentary we were described as the leader of the vegan movement. I hate that yeah. even more. <laughs> There's no leader of the vegan movement. Yeah, that, you know what I mean? They, it's just the media. If people believe that, that I have anything to do with their titles, you know what I mean? Like, it's just the way they... The media are always sensationalizing stuff. I sensationalize stuff on my own YouTube channel. I understand the power of it, but, you know, pop star is like for an animal rights activist. But at least she writes what I told her about, that cows only give milk when they have babies, which she didn't know. At least she writes that that the females are getting milk machines and the males are getting killed. That's at, all right. At least something. No, no problem. Except there is a big problem with calling me a pop star. Uh, <laughs> I just don't like the term pop star. It's, yeah. it's like I'm Britney Spears or something. Like, Just because I'm well known as an animal rights activist yeah. doesn't mean I'm a pop star. I mean, it's, I think it's insulting. Maybe she can write well-known activists. Oh, well. <laughs> Pop star now. Not happy at all with that. And there's many things I've been called. And that one there is taking the cake right now. I was in gangs, I was violent, I was on drugs. So that's all true. But pop star? No. If like someone who stands for justice and creates social change, makes people uncomfortable with their food choices, tries to help liberate animals, it's considered a pop star. What's a pop star considered then? <laughs> Maybe we'll flash the article up on the screen and see what they really called it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it wasn't because I demand to be no. spoken to it. It's like I thought that it would be more powerful to have an interview yeah. at the front of a slaughterhouse. That's why I explained to her. And uh, pop star is just ridiculing yeah. what we stand for. Really, like we stand for justice to animals and we're against animal abuse and animal cruelty. How does that make um, anyone a pop star? I mean, just because someone's well known for uh, speaking up against this stuff doesn't mean that they're trying to be a pop star singer like Britney Spears. Hit me baby one more time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Britney Spears. <laughs> I can sing a better chorus than that, couldn't I? Yeah, that was half Sorry. <laughs> Try to make a little meal here quick. This is beetroot. This is the most vegetables I've had for a while.
There's 100 grams of tofu there, just break it up. <laughs> That's, you know, let's have a little taste test. Now what? You do what you gotta do on the big jobs. If it were you in the animal's position, would you want someone to help you? Think about that, I think about that all the time. Of course I would. If that was me in the back of that truck, I'd want you up here speaking for me as well or out there on the streets, standing in the cold, speaking to people by those screens. <laughs>